All right, welcome to The Office on Lagos Talks 91.3. My name is Michelle Ago, and it's 28 minutes now past the hour of four. Beautiful day in Lagos, amazing weather, if you ask me. It looks really beautiful outside. I feel like just going outside to get in some fresh air. But it's all good. Today on The Office, as you know, we bring you great conversations, great insights into your professional life. And uh, what way to do it than to partner with CIPM, that's the Chartered Institute of Personal Management. And today's topic would be on becoming a value-driven workforce. Some people do not know how, organizations do not know how to get there. And today we have a professional who will be joining us today. Hmm. All right, let's just quickly do a quick introduction of who she is. Uh, yes, she is the head corporate services of Veritas Capital Assurance PLC. As a people professional, she spearheads the, common, the company's wide administration and activities of human capital management, procurement and maintenance, and in customer interaction center. She's a graduate of the University of Hertfordshire in the United Kingdom with a BSc in business information systems and possesses an MSc that's a master's degree in service management from the University of Buckingham, UK. She brings to bear over 15 years of hands-on experience in strategy, policy formulation and implementation that has led and managed several high priority projects in several organizations along with her career in research, banking, asset management, human capital management, customer service, and information technology. She has demonstrated her sterling leadership attributes as head corporate service at TAK Asset Management Limited, the head of embassies and airlines at Uni uh, United Bank of Africa, UBA, and business development manager at Main Street Bank Limited, just to name a few, because there's so many, there's so many things that she has achieved over the years. And her name is Madame Aisha Garuba. Welcome to the office. Welcome to the conversation. Good evening. Good evening. It's nice to be here. Thank you so much. Uh, I must commend you. You pronounced the last name very well, Garba. Oh, nice. <laughs> so yeah, well, it is Garba. So that, that's fine. Sometimes it's uh, pronounced um, a bit differently, but yeah. So yeah, it's good to be here. Thank you very much. Absolutely. It's a pleasure to have you join us today. We always bring professionals on the show and the listeners are always itching to hear from professionals uh, because, uh, you know, we're in Lagos, it's a metropolitan city and there's so many people in the workforce in different parts of the economy, even people with businesses, entrepreneurs that tune into the office to learn new tips on how to manage their staff, how to manage their books and how to treat their bosses. And it just it just cuts across different areas. Uh, so that's the value that we bring to the listeners today. So to the listeners listen, to join the conversation, remember you can tweet at Lagos Talks 913, that is at Lagos Talks 913, and you can use the hashtag the office 913, that is hashtag the office 913. Call the phone lines as well on 015150913, 1913 Let's get into the business of today. How would you describe a value-driven workforce? Value-driven workforce. Hmm. First time hearing the, the entire sentence, but what, what really is the definition for that? Thank you for that question. It's something that we all need to key into as organizations, as uh, employers, as employees, because that is what will differentiate one organization from the other. So put it simply, it's basically a workforce that is um, treated and recognized as the most important assets of the organization. So the collective manpower, the people individually, they come together and form that uh, workforce and they're appreciated as, um, as you know, value drivers. So they're like an asset. I mean, like, a, like any other investment really in the organization and they're capable of driving, you know, healthy returns for, for the organization. Well, that's good. That's great to know. Thank you. So what are the benefits of, of being value driven? What do companies stand to gain from being value driven? Or what do employers stand to gain for having a value driven workforce? What's the benefits? Now, being value driven actually cuts across uh, purpose. It cuts across outcomes of the organization's performance, its businesses, its relationships with uh, different stakeholders, um, you know, from the investors to the regulators to the society. So every stakeholder that has a stake in that organization, it cuts across. So it's, it's important to ensure that, you know, 
an organization is value driven because that comes with a higher purpose that comes with uh, responsibilities you know and um, having a solid belief system um, that you know as individuals you know for value driven uh, as employees that they're value driven they're able to aspire to see that okay this organization I have an entrepreneurial mindset is like my organization I would like to see that it's it performs well. So what can I do to add value? How do I create value? How do I ensure that I make an impact that, you know, is sustainable? So it's, it's really more of, you know, identifying and locating those uh, individuals, those talents, you know, that have value and are willing to go the extra mile to, to provide that value and contribute uh, to the organization. All right. So I think right now you just touched on two different uh bodies together the employers and the employees so as an employer you need to be able to identify the right talents those with the right passion that you need to drive that value into your company or bring out great results and you as an employee yourself uh, you also need to identify with the goals of the company understand why you're there identify the value that you can bring and go the extra mile to make it happen, just having that entrepreneurial spirit, making sure that that business, you're owning that space, you're doing what is expected of you and add a great value altogether. Thank you for that. Uh, now, some organizations will rather make a profit. Let's talk about that now. Some organizations will rather make a profit at the expense of the value that they give to their customers. What are your thoughts on this? Hmm. Profits at the expense of value is a no-no, it's not okay. I mean, it's basically a disservice to the customer and to the stakeholders. I mean, it undermines value, it undermines uh, quality, it undermines uh, ethics. I mean, it, 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 it touches and borders on ethics, you know? So it's something that uh, the shift and the narrative should be more on value maximization more than profit maximization because you have to have value first before you can even make profit. You know, so take, for instance, where um, the innovation of new ideas that you need to translate into products um, that can be sold competitively, mm. you know, uh, requires human capital, requires value. So until that has been taken care of, been identified, been provided with the right resources and uh, technologies, you can't uh, take it to market and then you can't make profit. So value is, is very central to you know, the organization. And as I mentioned, it's two ways, you know, so the, the individual, the employee, and then the employer, you know, must, you know, know their responsibilities in, in, in providing value, in adding value, in making value. All right, so a good response. But I've noticed that over time, or we have noticed that over time, when companies or organizations or establishments make that profit, they finally have the investors happy. Everyone is really happy with the profits margin that they've made over the years. The value tends to decline. And we see businesses that have been really, you know, be, been in your glory days become very stifled and just stagnant or even declining at the end of the day. How exactly can organizations continue to maintain the value even after seeing so much profit over the years? How do they yeah, stay this, motivated? This, this is very crucial in um, running a business and sustaining a business. So um, as I mentioned, the, the emphasis should be on, on value maximization. Now to, to, to do that and to focus on ensuring you're able to retain your profits. Otherwise, you start, you know, having high attrition of uh, the customers and high attrition of even the staff, you know, and that way you lose value, you lose your profit. So, but to sustain it, um, what is integral here is the people. The people are the assets. We still have to go back to that fundamental uh, uh, assets that we have in the organization. How do we retain them? It's all about, you know, identifying, retaining, making them happy, making the environment conducive enough and nurturing it enough for them to be able to bring out more value, bring out more ideas, you know, so that there's a whole uh, buzz of ideation, there's a whole buzz of uh, this is our company, this is our brand, this is our logo, you know, so the internal uh, brand ambassadors, the internal uh, social media marketers, you know, they, they have a passion for it. So the, the, the responsibility, you know, of course, lies still with the organization to ensure that, you know, as the employer of labor, that you make it uh, a duty that people that you're employing, you identify that they're fit for purpose. That is first of all. Mm -hmm. And if you do identify them and you bring them in, you must retain them. And in retaining them, there are lots of things that you need to look out for in ensuring that they're, they're stay with you in the organization from the time you 
you uh, put up the ad, by the time you interview them, you, you onboard them, you do the induction, you send them on training, you monitor their, perform their performance, um, you, you, you are able to provide um, experiences that will bring out the best in them. You know, you have to equip them with the necessary tools, with the necessary resources, and, you know, ensure that they are eager to give innovation. You know, after all, um, as talents, as professionals, you know, you're paid to provide, you know, the value that you have within you, which will um, translate to, you know, products, will translate to services, will translate to, to profit for the organization. So really, it's, it's about having a, a, a very uh, formidable ecosystem that will ensure people are excited to be there. They, they, they would have a higher purpose and look forward to maintaining, you know, or sustaining, you know, those values that they have. Hmm. All right, thank you for that. Let's talk about the, the ratio for organizations that want to remain relevant or keep their sustenance going. What do you think should be the ratio of profits to value? How do you balance it out? You know, that's, that's a, a tricky question. And I've, I've, I've uh, gotten a few questions around that uh, in, in the past. And uh, my response has always been not to be quick to peg figures around value uh, against um, profit, mm -hmm. because value is, is, can, be, can be quite um, difficult to measure. Mm. It's intangible. Okay, so if you want to place or peg a figure or a percentage around it vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, uh, how it will affect profit, it's, it's not a, a good approach. Rather, the emphasis should be on even locating, you know, the human capital that is capable of providing that value and nurturing it, like I said. So if, if one can, uh, you know, that, uh, that as an organization, you know, um, we are able to identify that, the profit will eventually come in. So the emphasis should not be so much on, or, or like uh, looking at um, efficiency ratios. This is not about efficiency ratio or cost to income ratio. This is about value, creating the value, sustaining it in order for you to even have the profits. So I am very cautious about, you know, quickly pegging a figure or having like a percentage around the two of them together like that. Of course, they are, they are connected, uh, no doubt. You know, there's a, there's a strong connection between the two um, in terms of profit, in terms of value, but uh, to say that, you know, there should be a percentage of how you try to balance it, it's, it's not advisable. First of all, identify your talents, the personalities, the competences, the, the behavioral, you know, mindset that you want to have, the fitness for purpose, uh, you know, and the interest, you know, that they have in the organization. I mean, those are things that are, uh, are a bit hard to measure, but they are measurable in terms of, okay, the soft side of it when you're running your surveys and making sure that, you know, engagement levels are high. So the emphasis should be more on that, you know, the soft side of things, you know, monitoring and ensuring that, you know, uh, they're, they're okay, they're happy, their welfare, their well-being, and all those other elements, you know, come into play. So if that is reinforced, mm -hmm. then, you know, the profit is not an issue. It, it will come in because without having people deliver the value, that profit is not going to come in. All right, thank you. Now, we, we all know how the business environment is in Nigeria. Maintaining value is not easy. Um, as much as you want to put in so much value, sometimes you feel you're getting stretched out or you're thinning out on resources because things just get expensive. You know, they just keep going higher and higher and higher and higher. How, how can you help customers understand or see the value that you bring in comparison to the price that they have to pay for this value. Uh, because sometimes they, they think, oh, it's the same thing. It's the same product that you, you've been selling for 10 years. Nothing has changed so far. So why do I have to pay more for it? How do you, how do you let them or bring them into saying that, you know, things are getting expensive, but of course you don't want to tell them that literally, but how can you remarket the same product and make it more valuable to the list, to, 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 to those that are buying it, the customers or the consumers, you know, while still changing the price at the same time? The simple answer is feedback. feedback. They have to be carried along. Yeah, okay. feedback. As, as cliche as it is, it is fundamental, you know, that we continue to get that feedback from them and carry them along. We have to be obsessed with our customers. 
you know, to get the best out of them. We need to try and be ahead of the curve in terms of their expectations and in order to meet them. So it's, we shouldn't be reactive, we should be proactive. And in doing that, we must carry them along. We must get that feedback. So if we want to repackage a product or introduce a new product at a you know, higher premium or at a higher rate or, or you know, different uh, pricing, uh, the research and development would have taken place into, into account. And part of that research, they need to be part of it. So you will have to have um, you know, the voice of the customer, the VOC. So you need to understand, okay, we're about to launch a product. We're thinking about you know, introducing some more uh, features into it, but it's going to come up to slightly different calls. So you will need to have like a focus group discussion. So it's not going to go out there yet, but at least you'll have a handful of products that you can sample their opinions, different demographics, you know, and um, with that, you can now say, okay, based on the different um, demographics, I've done like a, a, a deep test, you know, a litmus test to, to identify that, okay, with this sort of demographics, if I introduce this kind of features uh, at this pricing, what would it be like? But mind you, this feature, um, this is the benefit that you stand to gain. And value is two ways. So you're getting value for this. And as an organization, we'll ensure that, you know, we're able to meet, you know, your needs. So it's about, like I said, you know, being ahead of... Back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I, I find that some companies, you know, send constant newsletters on things like this. It's like, it's like a family. They see their clients or their customers as family members. They share everything. They share new products, new pricing, explaining, trying to make them remain with them, you know, and not lose this customer. So, so like you've rightly said, feedback, the mechanism, it has to be there. Uh, a lot of Nigerian businesses are still learning with this regard, uh, digital marketing and, you know, connecting with your, with your base, with your clients, with your customers and maintaining them over the years by constantly communicating with them and giving them that much needed feedback and getting feedback from them as well. So communication, absolutely key. What is the role of HR professionals? You know, the show is also centered around HR professionals, kind of. And when it comes to a value-driven workforce, what role can the HR professionals play in building a very strong value-driven workforce? Yes, as HR professionals, uh, you know, we're central to this. As much as we talk about employers interchangeably, um, the people that own that process are the HR professionals because they recruit you know, the talents, they identify them, you know, so the role there to ensure that, you know, there's a value driven workforce, it's by focusing on the leadership, by improving the leadership effectiveness of the organization, investing in employee engagement across the employee life cycle is important that every stage of that life cycle, you are checking the pulse of the employee. voices to make a change here right. i would need um even one voice can make a big change we've seen what the millennials have done and things have changed since then you know so uh even the lone voice pay attention to what that lone voice is saying because uh, they might come up with an idea that can transform things and will benefit everyone else okay so it's it's keeping basically our eyes and ears very closely to how uh, the workforce is feeling because they're Individual performance, productivity, input uh, is what translates to the organization's collective, collective performance and output. Mm. So you don't want to have a, a disgruntled or disengaged employee in a team. He or she will eventually have an effect on the you know, combined uh, output of that team. Mm. And that has multiply effect in different departments and across the organization. So it's to be proactive again in identifying um, those engagement levels, those uh, uh, employees that are disengaged and being able to uh, discuss with them, engage them and find out what their concerns are. Of course, yeah, it's not possible to, you know, have a hundred percent perfect system, you know, but uh, it should be accommodating and flexible and agile enough mm -hmm. to listen and tweak certain things that by and large, you know, you would have uh, at least a 90% uh, engagement level that is high and sustainable. You know, so with that, you know, you continue to just transform, carry them along, encourage them, and, and make sure that you have a good reward system. Because mm -hmm. for the talents that you have, you must have a good uh, reward system that recognizes what they've done and um, they are rewarded uh, promptly. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, you know, it's 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 just one of those things that is a two-way thing. So they give, it's taken, but you also have to give back to them. You know, because without them and some of the values that they've brought in, certain organizations won't even, you know, be successful, but won't be where they are. 
you know, so let their, let, let their efforts count, let their legacies matter, so that even when, you know, they're no longer with the organization, you know that they've made an impact, you know, in, in that organization. So yeah, it's really to appreciate people. At the end of the day, they're human beings. You need to appreciate them. You need to, you know, uh, really love them too. That's, that's splendid, as you've rightly said. But let's talk about the employees right now. How or what do they need to do to become value-driven themselves? It's great to see that employers reward their staff, you know, the employees, um, you know, recognize them, appreciate them, show them love for giving so much value. But how can the staff or the employees remain value-driven over the years? maintaining the same enthusiasm, the same vigor, the same motivation to give their best to the company. What do they need for that to happen and what can they do to maintain it? As an employee, it's very important to remain relevant. In remaining relevant, you need to keep researching, you need to keep reading, you need to keep developing your skills. Um, it's constant. You just have to continuously better yourself you know it's very important because uh even waiting for the organization to provide you with that training is not something that should be primary you learn on the go you learn on the floor you you're at that point you'll even bring in certain ideas as you know uh, you're confronted with certain challenges and that's why you're the paid professional to be able to think wide and deep you know so it's, it's it's a continuous learning journey as well as an employee so it's it's to really equip yourself with as much uh, knowledge as much learning as you can yes the organization supports you too but please for you to be really value driven you even have to be ahead of the organization you don't have to wait for the organization to to take you on training you should be the one that should even be ahead of it and identifying the training that you want the organization to to sponsor you for and if they don't like i said you know you must you must because at the end of the day the, it's for you you the value that you get or the, the lessons or the learning that you get the skills the competency and everything that you get is for you the organizations are going to stop you and say oh spill out everything that you've learned and leave it behind no you're taking it somewhere else so if you've been able to successfully apply what you've learned kudos to you that means you're you're an expert there you're a particular you're a practitioner there you've been able to successfully carry it out and apply it Absolutely. okay so it's important that you're you know you're ahead of the organization in learning it's very very important because that's what will keep you ahead of everyone else will keep you uh, um, competitive, mm. you know, and really relevant and you know your worth more than anything else and you don't have to wait to have it labeled or tagged, you know your worth. Thank you so much. You've been listening to Madam Aisha Garba and she is the head corporate service of Veritas Capital Assurance PLC. With over 15 years experience, I'm sure you listening, you have a question from her for her. You want to tap into her wealth of experience and knowledge and wisdom. So if you have a question and you'd like to join the conversation, you can send us a message on WhatsApp right away or call. She's right here to you listen and attend to your questions. Call the phone lines 0809 234 5913-0809-191-3913-0809-222-0913 or call the landline numbers on 01-515-1913-01-515-0913. Send us a message on Twitter as well at Lagos Talks 913, that is at Lagos Talks. 913. You can use the hashtag the office 913. On WhatsApp, it's 0809-234-5913. We have a message here uh, that we'll be wrapping up the show with. It's coming from, well, he didn't say, he or she didn't say uh, their names, but uh, good evening, Michelle and Madam Aisha. This session is very insightful. Please, I'd like to know how I can improve myself as an HR officer who works in an unstructured company and doesn't have proper HR experience? Hmm. Very good question. And um, my advice for the individual yes. is uh, not far from what I had mentioned earlier that you need to invest in yourself, you know, uh, because that's where you find that you're able to add that value. So if an, in an unstructured environment or in an organization that is not structured, mm -hmm. be the flower that will grow there. Believe in yourself that you need to chart a roadmap for yourself. What exactly do you want to do 
in that organization? What, what value do you want to bring? What area of the you know, workforce or challenges or interventions or support, what part of it you know, do you want to uh, improve on? Mm. So that will now help to shape the scope of you know, um, your, your job there or your role there or what you know, value you want to create there. So for me, if I, I were in that kind of environment, definitely what I would do, and that's what I've been doing, uh, is that I, I don't limit myself to waiting for the organization to send your training. In fact, I invest more personally or individually uh, on my training, on my development, mm -hmm. and um, also being able to look at other uh, disciplines, other bodies of knowledge. So don't just limit yourself to HR. You, you could have a combination or a hybrid of you know, certain skill sets that can now help you improve a certain issue in the organization. So I would take it as a challenge upon myself that as instructed as this organization is, I must add value in one way or the other. So what area of it do I want to dimension? So you need to dimension your environment very well, dimension the organization. What layers within the organization is it that you want to target for improvement? You can't fix everything you know, all at once, even if you had all the time you wouldn't be able to because you still need to carry people along. So that's why it's important to, to, to you know, identify the areas that of interest where you know you really have a passion to, to see change there. Because if you want to see change, we start with ourselves. Mm. You know, you have to look at the mirror and say, okay, what change do I want? Let me start with myself. So if there's certain skill set that you want to hone in on or sharpen, then go ahead and go and sharpen them and come back and definitely, you know, do what you need to do to transform that place. So I would want that individual to remain there and do what he or she can hmm. to make sure that they make an indelible impression in that organization before even thinking uh, otherwise than being there. So please, um, my advice is don't be in a haste to just take a walk. Make sure that wherever you are, that you add value in one way or the other. Let your legacy speak for you, even, if, even after you've, you've left the organization. But first of all, Look inwards. What area do I want to develop? If I'm short of a certain skill or a gap or whatever, how do I address it? So that person needs to be sure how and when they want to actually, um, you know, move uh, swiftly into action. You know, so what she must, she or he or she must develop herself first, and then use that tool, <laughs> you know, to apply it in that environment. You know, so you have to equip yourself. You have to equip yourself with as many. Uh, disciplines as you can that would be of course relevant to what you're pursuing all right thank you so much it's been a pleasure having you join us on the office today hopefully we'll have you back soon on other topics and areas of expertise that you do have to share with us uh, yeah then for those who are listening to us on the uh, for the first time remember that the office is brought to you by CIPM that's the Chartered Institute of Personal Management in partnership with Lagos Talks 91.3 we'll be back next week Thursday from 4 30 p.m to 5 p.m until then coming up next is Zeal on critical thinking stay with us we are Lagos Talks 91.3 let's talk